We're in the city of Yucaipa today, out at the Yucaipa Valley Water District, and I'm here with Bill Schnitz. Now, Bill, tell us, what is our problem we're gonna be working on today? Our problem is homeowners wasting water through their irrigation systems. And I'm gonna teach these kids how to be water detectives. What are the key components you're having students focus on when they're going around being detectives at these houses? Well, first I'm trying to teach them how to see the big picture, how to stand back and look at the whole garden. First thing we're gonna do is use our power observation, right? I wanna get the blinders off of them. Then I want them to focus in on the details. Now that's a good detective. Allison, what do you have there? It's a brooklet and sprinkler head. The water's just all gonna spray out. It's gonna waste a lot of water, and so that will be a big problem because we're in a drought. Is there water in, running down the curb? And if there was, where was that water coming from? It's a tall tale sign you gotta leak someplace. What's one of the things you've realized now starting this process? Uh, I've realized that we use a lot more water than we should be using. Noah, what's your assessment of the house we've stopped at right now? Overall, it looks good at sight, but in more depth, it's not a very good one. Then we're going up to the hose bibs, or garden valves, coming out of the house. So in every garden you're working in or you're inspecting, the first thing you want to do is find out where the shutoff valve is. Because when you're working on the valves and you accidentally break them and you have a 20-foot geyser, What's the first thing you want to do? Shut it, Shut it off. Biggest waste of water that we've seen is actually on sprinkler heads that are old style sprinklers that use too much water. We've had sprinkler heads that are buried in bushes. Their pattern is being deflected and they're not putting the water on evenly. So after our students learn how to become water and irrigation detectives, they took these problems back to their classrooms, put their heads together, and they came up with some solutions that they're now presenting to the homeowner. We could add some drip lines in over there instead of the sprinklers because the sprinkler is going everywhere all over the driveway and stuff. We recommended using MP rotor sprinklers to cover more ground and less water. Uh, use mulch and gravel on sloped areas so you can collect excess water and rainwater. Pull up sprinklers that are too deep in the ground. Change the timers, like instead of having it water every day, like two to three times a week. All of your timers have been adjusted. Sprinkler heads are new out here, more efficient. Sprinkler heads throughout here have all been adjusted. Mulch in the planters. All of this equals saving a lot of water. A lot of water and a lot of money, and it's great for the environment. These kids have done a great job, and it's wonderful. Problem solved. Problem solved. Yeah. yeah. Is it amazing what young, brilliant minds can come up with? So if you have a problem that needs solved, or if you think you have what it takes to be a CQ problem solver, let us hear from you. Go to curiositycrest.org, click on the CQ problem solvers, and who knows, we may be seeing you soon.